that back up. Um. So if you're on YouTube, you can actually see me standing in front of the back of my truck. Uh, this this whole setup is, is exhausting at this point. <clears throat> The problem with all of this, which I, I actually, I enjoy doing it because it's a bunch of troubleshooting, but the problem with it is most laptops, most software that's out there for uh, live streaming, like Discord or Zoom or anything, they don't want to give you the audio input and output through the same jack. And it's very difficult to get the setup proper. So you need a mixer for me to be able to hear you and pull from you at the same time. Uh, and that's why this is such a complicated beast, because when I go from different devices to try and set this up, different ones have different uh, defaults that they go to. So it's not just like, oh, yeah, just plug in your headphones there and you can use it, which if you're not worried about the output coming out a separate output is not complicated because we all use the same headset to, to talk to people. But when you want your input to go through one thing and your output to go through another, it never seems to work. So... It's, that's why I use a mixer for sound, and then of course I have the different uh, uh, microphone setup, which y'all don't hear me thumping on this microphone, but the internet does. So that way, you can hear me on this input, but I can't take my audio that's going into you and mix it out. So I have to have a separate microphone for that. So it just becomes a mess. And the cool thing is, is I'm running all this out of the back of my truck. I'm not hooked up to any power but the 400 watts of solar on my roof of my truck which I was going to bring up real quick so you guys can see. Um, I am yeah, your Discord doesn't make a video. You, can see, you can't see the Discord video? Nope, just your profile pic. That's so, so, I'm literally, you can, if you look at YouTube, you can see that I'm live streaming. Let me go to that feed. Actually, I'm going to jump to that feed. See the sunset on Uranus. It's trying, right? <laughs> and I'm on cut two. Yeah, if you can if you can go to YouTube, you'll see that I'm actually streaming and I can see my own video. <laughs> so I guess it just doesn't care to show you guys. I don't know why. And this is my issue again with Discord. Discord is very strange about that. Um, but the whole point of this setup, the whole point of even doing this was to get on here so that I could talk to the, to the different event holders out there, uh, to let everybody know that it's, it's not just Jambo that's doing events, right? And we can all talk about our own events and our own setups and our own, uh, um, processes of doing all this stuff. And right now I am hearing nothing but feedback from the HDMIs, which I've cut them off. So whatever. Here's me not caring enough, right? So, so I know you guys do the Razorbacks, right? That's the the event that's at the end of May, beginning of June. Oh my God, are we serious? Now I lost you guys. <laughs> I hate this. Test again. Trying one more time before I just slim the laptop down onto the ground. Okay, see now I can hear you. Okay. So what about now? Yeah, I just can't give a video from you guys as well as audio. It's so stupid. All right. So I want to smash things. It'll make me feel better. You know what I could do? I could prove to people that I am talking to you guys. <laughs> By putting a camera up, showing this, and showing this. There's people. People. <laughs> and it's stuck on not focusing. So what do you guys do whenever you guys, uh, uh, do you guys have any events at the Razorback uh, um, off-road event? you guys have any <coughs> internal events or is it all just load, uh, set up at the park? So we have, um, you know, everything set up at the park. It's usually a, a long weekend, so people start rolling in on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, pack up Sunday, and go home. Um, we have food, beverages. Um, so Friday night, Saturday night, we'll feed everybody. Uh, typically have something catered in, have live music on Friday night. <clears throat> Saturday night, we'll have a raffle. 
Uh, obviously, during the day, we have open wheeling, so kind of do as you please at the park. And we also have some guided trail runs, especially for, you know, the newer folks or uh, maybe if somebody's new to the park or maybe you just want to, you know, catch an easy trail ride with some folks. We have some guided runs during the day on uh, Friday and Saturday are the most eventful, but obviously we'll be there Thursday wheeling and, and carrying on. Um, got some unique things happening this year. Um, Thursday night, all the early roller enters we're gonna have a little swap meet and that kind of thing and cornhole and just fraternization up at the pavilion and um man just get together and have a good time you know that's what it's all about so uh nothing too crazy just uh you know get together and do some wheeling and hang out and eat and fellowship and be merry i I think that's the main goal for all of us right to just hang out and have a blast i think think that's that's what makes all of these events fun is really I, only, I, I don't even live in Texas anymore. I uh, haven't lived there in almost 20 years. And every time I go back, I always hit my friends up. Hey, I'm going to this event. Some of them show up, some of them don't. But that's like our time to get together, right? Yep, no doubt. Uh, and this year will be uh, 25 years of Razorback Land Cruisers. Uh, Mark Bowen here, he's on the call, and he's, he's our resident historian just about the club. And, you know, he's been there from kind of ground up seeing how the club has grown and developed and you know all the the og old school guys have came and gone and you know new blood and that kind of thing and bowen can talk a little more about that than i can so i'll shut up sure yeah so yeah we're going 25 years this year that's pretty amazing um for any club to stay organized that long um, but we're pretty proud of this club being Toyota generated and Toyota enthusiasts. And, um, yeah, one of the original members from back in 1999, uh, our club started out as, you know, there really, there wasn't any off-road parks or, or what you call organized parks in Arkansas back at the time. So, you know, we were just a trail riding group that got together and decided we want to put on an event. And so our original event was in the Ozark Mountains um, here in Northwest Arkansas, and that was the first couple of years. And then we heard about this new off-road park that a uh, few fellas had, had gone in together and bought, and we went down to check it out, and uh, it was the beginning of Hot Springs Off-Road Park. Back then it was uh, originally Superlift Off-Road Park, which... Uh, I guess uh, kind of tied in with Barnwell Mountain as well, but um, that kind of just played out over time, and and it transitioned into Hot Springs Off Road Park. But we've been doing this for this will be 25 years this year, and so we're wanting to have a the biggest and best event ever. Um, we still got a lot of original members. We gain new members every year. And, you know, each time we get together, like you said, uh, we're going to be there and we invite all of our friends. And that's where this is the gathering spot where we see a, only see these people this time each year. And, and, you know, we can reconnect and show any cool things that we've done to our rig since the last time we met. And, uh, again, I've never had a bad time. And going on 24 uh, events we put in the books, going on 25 um that's a lot that says a lot that I've, I've never had a bad time down here and so we just uh, we're just looking forward to to putting on another event and hopefully you know just have another great time i, th- I think uh I, I made a joke about it the last time i was at uh the it's the uh, the ozarks off-road park right so i don't screw that up uh the event's gonna be at the hot springs the off-road hot springs park, park is its official park. name oh, yeah yeah uh that was my first time to actually will at an event was that event last year because I don't get to will. This is what I do the whole time I'm at Jambo. I'm either yeah. in my truck uh, driving to a setup and then tearing things down and putting it back together or I'm, I'm at the pavilion sitting in the big tent trying to get things prepared for the next thing. It's I'm never on a trail. Unless I'm in the back of someone's vehicle taking photos of stuff that's on a trail or taking video. I'm never behind the wheel on a trail. And I will say, I've been down almost every single trail at, at Barnwell. And between the two parks, I don't I don't think... I, I, there's no other obstacle I need to try and do between the uh, Hot Springs Park and, and Barnwell. It's, mm-hmm. it's two amazing parks. I, I, did, I will say, though, 
I just got a chance to do um, uh, the one Hawk, uh, Hawk Pride out here in Arkansas, and I'm only an hour from it, and they do the Mardi Crawl. That shocked the crap out of me. The, the, the only portion of it that I really got to see was called the Big Hill. Have any of you guys done that one? Yeah, yeah Andrew yeah. can speak on that. <laughs> yeah, over at Hawk Pride. So where are you geographically, if you're only an hour from Hawk Pride? Athens, Alabama. Oh, Athens, Alabama. Okay. I'm well, I'm, in, I'm actually in the north um, central uh, Mississippi area, so I'm about an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, I'm closer to Hawk Pride than any of the Louisiana guys that come up and ride and put the event on, but they're top notch too, man. Anytime they come up and ride, I try to catch, even if it's a day trip out there for the weekend. That's a that's a really well uh, ran park for sure. I've been I've been wanting to do that event uh, uh, a couple of years now, and I think Colleen and Andrew went to it a couple of times now. I'm super stoked now to see uh, all of the people go down Big Hill because I pulled up to that, and my wife looked at me and goes, "What are we doing?" And I was like, "This is cool, this is cool," and it, so that's what I'm saying. Like, there, there's only like three parks that I've been to in the area, but I've seen nothing but pictures from numerous other parks, and it's it's impressive that we have three of the coolest toyota events at these three different parks it's, it blows my mind the amount of views we can get out of it the amount of photos we can take from it, it's just a gorgeous uh, uh three parks it's nuts to me yeah. yep, no doubt it, the southeast definitely has uh, a lot to offer in the way of off-roading and i know it's beautiful out west and over on the west coast and then the northwest and that kind of thing but uh southeast wheeling especially hot springs off-road park uh, one of my favorite parks, uh, you know, in the continental United States, um, hands down, some of the best, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, I like the overlook that uh, we, Colleen and them got me to go over on it. First time I've ever um, uh, off-roaded, like I said, the one overlook, you have to drive across the road to get to it. And as you're going up the hill, that's the first time I really looked up and went, oh, so that's what more than 30 degrees looks like. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm watching my FJ's little counter just drop behind 30, and I'm like, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, this is fine, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It's a, it's a gorgeous park, a lot of trees and everything, very gorgeous. I think um, Snake, Snake's Ravine or something like that, I, I'm very bad at names, so let's just blame brain surgery on that. But uh, the way you have to wind through the trees, and it's just puts in some very epic views. It, it, it's just I don't understand why people don't go wheeling when they have a truck to do it. <laughs> no doubt. And I think a lot of it is maybe people are intimidated. Uh, maybe they have a vehicle that, that they purchased, a TRD Pro, 4Runner, whatever, um, and they get some lift and some tires. And, I mean, they're making payments on a $50,000 vehicle. I mean, they don't want to come out here and thrash it and bash it off every rock and tree. But that's a good thing about these off-road parks is at this point uh, – it's not necessarily all about that. I mean, it's mild to wild. It's from almost dirt roads to whatever you want to do. I mean, there's something literally for everybody. You can drive one off the lot, drive it out there, and have a blast all weekend long. I, I, I will say when you say it's mild to wild that, that it's 100% accurate. E even Jambo, uh, you know, we, we have things where people can just come overland and sit, right? You can enjoy your setup, have a good camp out, uh, really uh, take advantage of just being out in the wild and that's that's the part that i think i enjoy more than anything is us getting out there and even my truck set up right like I, i'm dumping all this stupid money that the wife hates i do so that i can literally live out of this truck if i wanted to for a weekend with just me the pup and a bunch of camera equipment and just take video and footage of some of these amazing things that you can't see from your living room and and i will say i took some photos um at the overlook and I took some photos at uh, Hawk Pride. Huh. Both of them that I posted online, I didn't get the kind of, you know, response that internally I got when I saw it. And it's because you can't, the pictures don't do it justice. But when you're standing there at the top of the overlook or your top of Big Hill or half of the uh, different trails out there at Barnwell, you just, you really see how complex it is trying to get one of these trucks up those hills. And it's, it's a different perspective from, from there versus just what you see online. That's why I'm always trying to tell people, I know you just bought your 4Runner. I know you're scared to wheel in it. 
but you don't have to do anything but a bunny bunny trail if you want to just trust me come out even ride shotgun with somebody else and you'll you'll love it it'll it'll be a game changer yeah, no doubt. Um, and I'm the very world's worst that um, I get so involved in, you know, being present uh, and seeing the views and visiting with friends and all that kind of thing that um, we don't take a whole lot of pictures, you know, and we being that me, you know, I don't take a whole lot of pictures. I think that Craig does an awesome job of that um, as far as he, he took some pretty, pretty epic pictures, you know, that... Uh, you have to see it in person, but it, it really portrays the landscape well and just what's out there and what you can do and what you can see. So it's, uh, it, I mean, I've been going out there since 2006 and it's, you know, every time it's something new and it's, you know, just sit back and soak it up type, type deal. It's, I think, I think that's the best way to, to take most of these parks is, is not by using your camera. Uh, because there are times like I've sat there, uh, 2,000 photos at the at the end of a jambo and I got home and I was exhausted and I went through my photos and I went crap I don't even remember that that's not fun you know what I mean that's that's not the same perspective as being in your truck and driving it and seeing it there's that disconnection you get as a media guy that sometimes uh, I regret but at the same time uh, even whenever I'm behind the lens of the camera you know it, I, I meet some of the most interesting people that I just the conversation I'm having while we're out there in the wild, I, I'll never forget. I, it's just too much fun. I'm just the opposite. I, <clears throat> we show up at these events, and I'm there for four days, and we have such an amazing time, and we do a lot of cool stuff and see these uh, Toyotas do some amazing things. Like, you look at it, and you say, there's no way he's going to make it, and he just makes it up without even slipping a tire. And then you have all these weekend of memories and I look back, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I didn't take any pictures. <laughs> like, I, I don't have any way to record this or, or, you know, show anybody, but I can sure tell them how cool it was. So you have the other end of the spectrum, like myself, where you just, you're taking it all in, and you're involved, and you're doing, but you're, you're not uh, recording any memories. It's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's not a bad thing, but it just makes me go, you know what, next year at Jambo, I'll get pictures of this. <laughs> and that's that's the one thing I do like about getting to work it as as much as get you know experiencing other events is I know that I'm going to be back there and I know that I get to think to myself all right what are we going to do different how are we going to change this how are we going to make it more uh, uh, ri ridiculous for people no doubt <clears throat> and you know the great thing about it is you get to come out and you get to have a weekend like that and then you know you still get to do something great for the community in return like this year um we're gonna donate all the proceeds uh from the ramble so from the raffle and uh all of that money to the arkansas children's hospital so not, not only are you are you going and having a great weekend and spending time with your friends and uh, visiting and riding and seeing a lot of cool rigs and that kind of thing but you're also helping a great cause you know you're giving back to the community i think i think that's the thing that i think it's what really sold me on this chris told me uh i guess it's 2015 or 2014 when he finally convinced me to, to get my stuff together and come out to the event he's like uh you know we donate to to women rock and i was like what do you mean you donate to Women Rock? And he's like, oh, yeah, like a majority of our, our proceeds go to a donation. We're a nonprofit, not for profit, right? And I was like, wait a minute. So you guys are just putting on a show just to have fun? And he goes, yeah, man, yeah. this ain't a business. I was I was sold then because that, at the time I had been shooting for uh, everythingdrip.com, which honestly I loved – every second of it and and technically if i called george up right now he'd be like hey man you can shoot wherever you want to where do you want to go but there's a part of what we were shooting which is formula drift which is a big business a big entity you have gopro out there and everybody else trying to make their mark it's it's exhausting i got to see some of the coolest stuff but it's exhausting so these events what what really made me love them is the first time i went the whole time everyone was there just to have a blast Yes, there's money that's being spent to go to charity and all this stuff, but 
even the ladies at Women Rock, I would sit around and have drinks with them the day before Jambo, and then we would all joke with each other all night long uh, about different things that have happened all day. And it just, it's a blast. It's, it's not a, it's not a, a work event like, like any other media event I've done. And yet I think I put in more work at Jambo than I do at any other event. Uh, uh, one of our, our staff members uh, over the years had been tracking his steps at Jambo. And on average, it's between 20 and 30,000 steps a day at Jambo. And I was like, get out of here. No way. I cut my phone on. This was a few years ago. I cut my phone on. By the end of the day, I was at 23,000 steps. And then I remembered for four hours, I didn't have my phone on me. I was like, no, this is stupid. <laughs> that is not what I do. I'm, I'm an out of shape man. There's no reason for me to be walking that much. <laughs> But you don't you kind of touched it. on a point there. It's it's it's, it's you, if you think about it, we're, our core members that uh, you know, and all of, all the people that help put on our event, the Ramble. I mean, none of us make a dime. Um, we work a full time job every day, like everybody else, and and we do it because we love the community, we love the event, and we love the cause that it is. But like you said, we love the good time. I mean, like. If it wasn't such a good time, we wouldn't quite be, you know, so just ready to jump in and just work our tails off for a long time. And, you know, we started working on this ramble four or five, six months ago in preparation for June. And, you know, we're getting, it's closing in on us and we still have a lot of work to do. But even when the event comes, it's it's a lot of work. But because of all those things that you mentioned is why we do it. I mean... We just, we just love it. It's in our blood now at this point. And, you know, I don't see anything that would cause me to stop doing it. And, and as long as I, you know, I'm able. And so year after year, we, we just, we drive ourselves to put on a, a bigger, well, not maybe it doesn't have to be bigger, but just a better event, better for the people that's spending their hard earned money to register and come out and, and take their vacation days or, and their time to spend it with us. I mean, we don't take that lightly. And, you know, we struggle every year on what we're going to charge to, to enter our event. We try to keep that cost as low as it possibly can and still function as a club. So we're not out there trying to make a, a single cent um, on these events. We're there to do it, to meet new people, see our brothers, um, try to get new people involved in the sport. And once they, like you're talking about, they buy that new Toyota pickup or 4Runner or FJ, and, and they look at a hill or a, some kind of obstacle, and they're saying, there's no way my vehicle couldn't do that. And then, you know, you guide them through there, and then you see the smile on their face and the satisfaction. It's like, oh, my gosh, I never would have thought my vehicle could have done that. And that's what drew me in a long time ago. I mean, these Toyotas are amazing. They always have been, and they always will be. And so it's just it's just something that we have a huge passion for. I, I, I think that's what that's that's what shocked me is uh, I started off going to Jambo in just a Scion, an XB. And the first time I was at Jambo, uh, I drove I drove it around through the parking lot, jokingly making you know, comments like, oh, I'll be on the trails with everyone. And everyone got laughs out of it. And then I went down um, some trails with people who just bought their vehicle we actually saw a tacoma that we just bought at the time uh and i went down the trail with him the whole time i'm thinking is oh my god this is crazy why would he do this he's going to destroy this thing and we came out the other side i think it was a two diamond at jambo it came out the other side not a single scratch nothing and just some mud flung up right and uh i i swear the look on his face i was like why am i not doing this what is wrong with me here? It's, I'm the problem. <laughs> and, and the more I, I show up to Jambo to, to do all this, and the more I see brand new trucks out there, I'm shocked every time. But at the same time, uh, this they have the same look on their face by the end of the weekend. They're just so blown away by how well their truck does. They're, they're driving it back home. And they see somebody else who may have, you know, screwed up something on their truck, and then they'll talk to them about it. And, and it's the same response. I did something dumb. That's what happened. I, did, I shouldn't have done it. I was being, and and that really does show. You know, if you take your time out there on the trail and you you you, you listen to the training that we we provide with Rich or 
you you pay attention to the rules that everybody knows about, right? Which are the unspoken rules, which is one of the things we're trying to change is make those unspoken rules more known, right? Like driver, passenger, and stuff like that when you're, you're guiding someone and, and pay attention to your guide and all of that. Uh, we want it to where somebody can show up new in their truck, go through this whole experience, and then start thinking to themselves, all right, how can I do that bigger trail now? How, what do I need to do to the truck to go down that guy? Because that's, that's where we start to see this, like you said, a sport. Because it's what it becomes, because it's a stressful event inside that vehicle, trying to maneuver and learn how to control the car left to right down a trail and, and understand going high side versus low. It's, it's not simple, uh, but at the same time, the more you do it, the more it becomes second nature behind the wheel. And the more you start driving down the highway and thinking to yourself, man, this traffic is not going to hold me up because I think I can take that medium. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't do that, but I'm just saying that's a, that's a thing that I may have done in Florida a couple of times during traffic on I-10. <laughs> no doubt. And, um, you know, like Bowen mentioned earlier, it's um, it's great to get new people involved. You know, a lot of these, we've already mentioned a couple of the clubs, a couple of the events, the Toyota Land Cruiser Association affiliated um, clubs especially. Um, I mean, every single one of them donate to a great cause, whether it be some sort of state or local charity, um, something that, you know, is, is close to that club's heart, whatever they um you know, decide on for the year that, that they want to donate the proceeds to, or whether it's Blue Ribbon Coalition, some of the public land um, people that are out there fighting, advocating, and protecting those lands so we can go out and enjoy them. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, spending time with your family, you know, just whether it's come out with your wife and kids and whatever, and maybe bring an RC car or don't. I mean, show up with nothing, you know. You know visit with some of these guys. We've all got kids and uh, wives and that enjoy it as much as we do, that just like to get outside, get together, just be present, you know. Um, in a digital age where we're at now, uh, I think it's more important than ever that, that we get the kids out and continue uh, to follow in our footsteps and keep the ball rolling on all these things. So uh, that that's really important to me that, that we get the new people out and uh, come out, hang out. Hey, if you like it, great. Come on back. You know, we'll help you any way we can if you don't. You know, you, there, there's something else out there, but uh, I, I've never seen anybody sitting in a chair with their head in their hands crying at a TLCA event. So <laughs> take that for what it's worth. <laughs> that's that's. I mean, honestly, that it, that is the thing. Is it, it is very family oriented, and it, and it does. I I say it's family oriented. It, it, you'll create a new family while you're there, whether or not you bring your own, uh, because it it never has that that feel at any of the events uh, that we've been talking about. It never has that feel of uh, com competitive to the point of, of frustration, right? It has that, that, which actually, you know what? That brings me to a good point. I still don't understand this. All right. We have three events at Jambo. You guys know about them. Stampede, Blind Man's Bluff, and uh, uh, the Rock Crawl, right? Do you guys know that there is no money that gets paid in to get into that event and no one wins any money through the event? You guys know that, right? Like, it's not a real competition. Nobody right. who goes through the event treats it as if it's just a fun thing. They get competitive. And I'm like, you realize all you're going to win is like, sometimes we just weld together junk and, and call it a trophy because we want it to look fun and, and, and be, you know, about the, the sportsmanship of it. These people, I love every second of it. Cause I, I, I'm so blown away by it. it gets so competitive. And I'm like, you're not going to win anything. Is it, please don't destroy your truck. But it happens all the time. You'll see a, a, the Tundra last year just said, screw it, boom, wobbling all the way down the trail. Doesn't make any sense to me uh, down the rock crawl. He, he took it like it was the stampede. And I'm thinking to myself, I get it. You want to you wanna win. You really do. But at the same time, bro, <laughs> there's nothing to win. It's, <laughs> it's bragging rights at best. So I, I love that that's such a sportsmanship about it. And anyone who loses from it, you know, like there's never kicking rocks and throwing things. And there's never a fight anywhere. It's always, I mean, I got to give it up to him. He really didn't care about that truck. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And it hey, as long as he had fun. Yeah. And, and that's why, like, I think it's really shocked me about, like, what we're getting at, the, the camaraderie and the, 
the family friendliness of these events is you don't expect people to take stuff like that serious. Uh, but but then again, I never I never myself uh, uh, thought that we would do something that would get this many people into it that wasn't a true competition. But it's not a it's it's just for bragging rights, and they really do take it super serious. And I love that part of it because it shows how excited people are to be at Jambo and how much they thought about, you know what, I'm winning that stampede this year. I'm doing it. I don't care what it takes. And I'm like, wow, it's it, it blows my mind, man. <laughs> it, I, I think I, in the end it comes down to bragging rights, really. Sure. People love to have the bragging rights year to year. And, I, and I, <laughs> that's what that's what really gets me is is it's it, they all know it, too. It's just bragging rights. And, and I love that that's something that people want to brag about because that shows that they're having so much fun that they don't see it as, uh, you know, like a, a, a harsh competition that they have to focus on. it. It's just, I want to win just to say I win. It's awesome. It's yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, like, especially those harder competitions where the obstacles are just, you know, not your everyday run-of-the-mill vehicle is going to be in that or make it. I mean, think about all the work that they put in there just to make it be able to do that. Yeah. And then it becomes a contest of man and machine against obstacle. And they just want to prove that whatever they built with their own two hands or in their own hard-earned money can, can do it and just and do it better than others. Um, so I, I think it just boils down to, you know, having taken pride in your own vehicle, much less, you know, being better than the next guys or just getting lucky, whatever it may be. But, you know, just the same, you might have gone through it without a hitch and then your buddy, he goes and, and they're right there in the middle of them spotting them and trying to, help them through too and giving them a high five at the end and and drinking a cold one and talking about it for an hour you know so it's it's like i said it's the camaraderie it's the brotherhood and and we just put all of our faith in uh, in in these machines and and watch them work i i I, that's exactly what it is 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 it's that person who spent you know all summer working on their vehicle after jambo to come into next jambo with or even, you know, the Razorback event or, or any of these others, just with that whole goal in mind, I want to accomplish the thing that I couldn't do last year. I want to get over that obstacle I got stuck at last year. And I and I, I really, I'm the kind of person, I, I started off in autocross and drifting, and I'm the same way with it. I'm like, what do I need to do to get that those three seconds off my time so I can put myself in a new bracket? What do I need to do to, to get my car to flip around? So then coming into off-roading, it's that same thing. How do I understand this vehicle well enough to be able to take these obstacles? It's a, it's it's beautiful because it's still cars, automotive sports in general, all have those same kind of uh, uh, issues. This one is it's completely different, which is something I don't know if any of you guys ever uh, competed in other automotive events besides off-roading. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Drag racing, uh dirt bikes motocross um anything that uh that had a motor and a tire for a while was my my vice <laughs> so 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 taking that example right with uh drag racing you know loading the rear suspension to get that car to launch and get as much traction as possible is completely different than off-roading but you still and you could probably contest this the more you do it the more all of it becomes second nature and your hands just do it for you and, it, and it's why nope. I, I love doing this kind of stuff no doubt and you know it, it's one of those things that if you get to come out to an event we're talking about how fitting your rig and what you want on it well yeah it's cool to sit behind, sit behind your computer screen and check out all the things that all the cool kids are doing but how many opportunities have you had to sit down in a vehicle that's got a you know a eaten e-locker in it and actually sit in it, see what it does, see how it reacts. Old man, emu suspension, you know. Uh, I mean, it winches, apples for apples. I mean, chances are, you get in a vehicle and ride with some of these guys, you're going to get to see a winch work. Which one works best? Where do I want to put my dollars, you know? Um, how does a specific s- suspension ride or react? Well, you see something you like, chances are some of these guys are going to let you jump in and, hey, let's go ride some trails, and you can see exactly kind of what you want tailored to what you want to do with it. That, that's exactly how I learned about Marlin Crawler Gears the first time, was uh, somebody had it in their buggy, 
and I was like, what do you mean? And, and this was, I think, 2015, 2016, when I first started getting into the whole concept of off-roading. It's like, what do you mean crawler gears? And he goes, oh, bro, you can walk next to the truck while it drives the trail. I was like, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. And, and literally, he, he did it, which is comical to me. But <laughs> that's the thing. You're right. You know, getting to see someone else's setup and getting to see maybe someone has a similar setup to you, but they have that one thing you've been wanting. That's the huge thing that I see a lot of people do is uh, they'll walk around the parking lot and look at different uh, trucks and how they're set up. And then you'll see somebody walk up to their truck and be like, hey, 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 let me ask you a question. And then there you go. There's two new people that are going to be talking to each other all weekend. Hey, and we're always glad to talk about it. But uh, you brought up a great point with uh, with Marlon, with Marlon Crawler, man. Um, he was a great loss to the community, you know, love Big Mike and all those guys out there. I had the opportunity to meet and, and wheel with them early on um, in the 2000s. I say early on, early on in my um, wheeling career. Uh, in the early 2000s, and I've never been to an event uh, that Marlon was present at when I saw him with clean hands. You know, a lot of these supporting vendors and guys out here that are producing these things, doing R&D and supplying these products are absolutely top-notch. Um, it didn't matter if it was a trail gear, whatever, that had an issue. Uh, if you needed some help, Marlon was right in under there helping you jerk it out and sort through the issue so you could get back on the trails and wheel. The same uh, the same can be said, I just used him for an example, but the same can be said for a lot of these supporting vendors that help put these events on and donate money and product and time. You know, that's the, the most important thing is coming out and, and wheeling with us and bumping elbows and uh, just having that relationship. So at some point when you decide to pull the trigger on building a rig or whatever, you pick up the phone and you know, Hey, you know, Chris at 49 tire or, you know, whoever, you know, that that's my guy, you know? So it, it's good to have that relationship. And this is a great yeah. way to. That. Yeah. We have a, a, a real long standing with, with Marlon. It, you know, we, we talked about it after uh, his passing. It was, it was a shock. I think more than anything, uh, we got, personal messages from all over from people that we knew that that met him at a jambo event and and all of them had the same thing to say like you're saying you know they you wouldn't believe how many times he was always working on someone else's truck at an event and that and that shocked you know uh, a lot of us to hear what happened to him you know we're all sad about that and i and i i agree with you it's those kind of vendors that when they show up and they put their hands on someone else's truck for them or they help them with things, which, you know, uh, I think I saw Dougie's was at y'all's event. Uh, he's, mm -hmm. he's a title sponsor at ours. And I, I was shocked when it happened. He was like, Hey dude, you know what we need? We need a Marlin se section. And I was like, what, what, what do you mean a Marlin section? He goes, we need to repair vehicles at Jambo. And he started doing that at, at our at last year's Jambo and he's doing it again this year. And it's that, uh, emotional shock that I always get when I see that because in my head, you know, I'm used to going to, to autocross events and stuff like that. And it's super competitive. Something goes wrong. You, you can only rely on your friends to help you. You can't rely on a stranger. And in this environment, just being able to know that a stranger is going to be like, I got you, bud. I mean, the first time I, I came to Jambo, I watched a guy destroy a tire and and everybody stopped what they were doing, showed him how to use this hijack that he had on his truck, never pulled off before, showed him how to do all of this stuff on the trail, and then got back in his truck, and the people that were helping were on a trail adjacent to us, and they went back to their trucks and back down their truck. They just, that's the kind of thing that keeps me coming back to off-roading and made me buy this silly FJ, because I, it's different. I don't, I don't, I'm not knocking drifting. I'm not knocking autocross. I love those sports. But I just have really found my home here with with these these off road folks. Like you guys are a different breed. It's a it's a different uh, mindset at, at at any of these events versus because I, I I started drifting uh, when I was stationed overseas in Okinawa, and the only events that we would be able to get in are the ones that us as friends got together and rented the park out and did it ourselves. And that's what this feels like. Is that that you know, dragon that you chase the first time you get into a car. All these off-road events feel like that because that's what they are. It's a bunch of friends that get together to rent a park out to be able to do all this with each other. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and, you know, the, the new folks that may be out there watching, or I, you know, I try to convince 
everybody to come out because, hey, if you don't know anybody, I promise you, by the time you pack up and leave on Sunday, you're going to have some pals. You know, <laughs> whether that be people that have been doing it for a hundred years or maybe you and another guy show up and his family or he or her or whatever um, and, and visit and, and can get in contact and switch out phone numbers. And uh, a lot of these guys uh, that, like Bowen said earlier, you know, are my best friends and brothers are miles away. You know, maybe we don't see each other, but two or three times a year at an event. But, I mean, you can, <laughs> just an example, about five years ago, I, I was headed to a meeting in Central Tennessee and had some truck trouble, like catastrophic truck trouble, pouring down rain, um, fired up TLCA. I got to looking around some of the Cumberland Cruiser guys, never met them before in my life. You know, and they're like, hey, you're going to get a call in just a second. Guy had a shop down the road. We pulled my truck in, did the work, you know, half a day, right back on the road rolling out. So, you know, while that may not be a life or death big deal, when you can come into a community that has that kind of camaraderie and that kind of tight-knit uh, culture, I mean, you, you absolutely are missing out by not uh, showing up and hanging out. I 100% agree. It's, it's, a, it's a different animal. I, I, <laughs> I will say that I'm I'm more excited to go to an, an off-road event than I am most other things that I do nowadays. Uh, and I'm curious. I'm curious. That, are any of you guys uh, paying attention to the uh, eclipse that's going to happen and the fact that it's going to be right over the park there in Arkansas? So we actually are. And thank Craig. If he's still on here, he can speak to that better than, uh, than any of us. But several of us are going to be there, Craig, if you want to roll into that and what that looks yeah. like. Yeah, we will be there. Um, the eclipse is on Monday the 8th, but we will start coming in on Saturday, and we'll be doing camping and off-roading uh, up until the eclipse. So we, we've got um, a little event scheduled uh, for the pavilion to, uh, to invite people to come out to see uh, the park and meet Razorback Land Cruiser people. So it's going to be fun. It's nice that it's there, and... You know, we know it's really going to be crowded. I think some of the estimates are that there will be an extra 2 million people come into central Arkansas to see it. That's crazy. So we're just going to go. Huh? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to go lock ourselves in at Hot Off Road Park. Are you guys, are you guys going to do a, a cap on how many people show up? I think, um, Greg, you still on? Yeah, I see. Uh, I know there's a cap to actually how many people show up to the park. They said that they can handle up to about five or 600 rigs themselves on the trails. But as for a personal cap, I don't think there is one. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I may uh, try and make it out there for that. I'm, I'm still trying to... Um, get out of trouble with the wife <laughs> i think we have uh, an easter weekend before that and then i'm gonna try and convince her that i should be able to take off of work and go do that <laughs> i think it'll be a good time man we're uh, we're gonna roll in on saturday like craig said and me and my whole family we're gonna camp out in the overflow camping and uh, just make a weekend out of it. We always love to go to Hot Springs Off-Road Park. There's plenty of stuff to do downtown. I know it's going to be super busy. Um, a lot of the art and some of the... Uh, oh, I thought Mike was saying something. I know art and, and some of the uh, the other DOT and community stuff in North Texas and even over as far as into Tennessee... Um, you know, are giving out, hey, it's going to be pretty congested. Travel's going to be congested. So I think the plan for most of us is to leave on that Tuesday at some point, not just try to um, rush out of there on Monday because they are expecting a lot of congestion and traffic. So we're just going to ride it out, man. If I have to stay all week, I won't be too sad. <laughs> my, my goal is probably to show up Sunday, uh, sleep there in the truck, and then see it and do exactly that, leave right afterwards. Because I, I think I'm only taking Monday off, and I'm going to drive back home and then uh, go straight to work the next uh, day. If you manage to make it, 
feel free to get with me or Craig or any of us, and we'll be sure to hit a trail or two and show you around Hot Springs Off-Road Park. Dude. I hit most of their deep badge trails with 31-inch tires and open differentials with Nerf bars for sliders. And I actually didn't end up hurting a thing. This'll, it was a lot of fun. This will be the second time I'm at the park, and the last time I was there, there was an eclipse as well. So I'm starting to th- see a little bit of a, a, a weird uh, mm-hmm. thing happening there. And I, I don't know if it's that the park doesn't really exist or what. <laughs> it's all in your back. Twilight, man. It's weird, yeah. man. <laughs> all in your back. Because I, I told the wife, I was like, you know, we were at the event last year, and I was like, that's strange that there's an eclipse. So I, I set up, took a couple of photos of it, thought it was neat. And then um, I, I told her, you know what? We got to figure out where we're going to see the next one. And I looked it up and I went, oh, that's weird. It's going to be here. <laughs> she goes, well, I like this park. We can come back. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm, I'm going to try what yeah. I can to get out there for that one. I may bring the setup. I don't know if I'm going to do any live streaming, but I may record. Like, We're having you up. We sure do. Say again. I said, we enjoy having you come up. Yeah, it's fun, man. <laughs> yep. I, I, it's a beautiful park. It really is. It surprised me. Like, and I, and I don't want to say that like demeaning, but I, I've been to you know a couple of parks, and and each time I go to one, there's there's something different about the park, and that park in in Hot Springs, I, it's just driving to the park was gorgeous, and I was like, oh my god, if the park is anything like this. And then we pull in, and I'm like, what the heck? This place is gorgeous. As soon as we did our first trail, I was so shocked. I, I, I love that park. I yeah, really and you know, the thing, the thing about it is the people own it really work at improving. You know, working at it to, uh, to maintain the trails and to improve things. And so every time I go over there, there's something different because they've, you know, they've made improvements to it. It's unbelievable. It's that's it. That's that's what I, I do like about these private parks versus like a state park or something. There's a state park. They're like, do you have access? Okay, you got access. All right, see you later. Private parks. They really they really take care of it because they know why people show up. They, we show up because we want to go off roading. We show up because we want to see something cool. We want to have fun. And it doesn't it doesn't work if it's the same old. Uh, line that you walk through every week right it, it's got to be something that uh keeps bringing you back and i and i think barnwell does a good job whenever the rains come in it r- destroys the trails and and they have to go back out there and, and rip some of them up and redo them and and the i've heard the same thing from you guys but as well as other people that go to barnwell about uh, hot springs and when i was out at uh, uh, hawk pride I, I could tell they were doing work on some of the trails there. It's like it's it's great to see that that it's not just uh, a park of trails that goes around and you can just go explore, but it's it's maintained and taken care of. So it's worth spending the, the couple of bucks to get into the parks. Definitely, I mean the park owners have been nothing but gracious to us at, at our events, and they kind of let us have free reign of the place. I mean, obviously there's rules set in place to protect people and you know keep it from getting crazy but um they've always give us you know a lot of leeway to produce our own event and and be able to kind of just manage that as we see it but they welcome feedback they they want to know about their park and what we like what we didn't like if there was anything and you know what they don't just do that just just to hear it they they actually act upon it and so there's things that that we've been doing the same trails for years and years and years, and there was particular spots in those trails that had really gotten washed out with the old owners. Um, I mean, not really to knock it. It was still a really good trail, but our some of our you know medium-capable vehicles was having a hard time, and we couldn't take those trails anymore, or we had to go around a particular spot. And, you know, we, we give that feedback to the new owners, and they're like, okay. And so we see most of those trails all back to the original way they were when we, we enjoyed them and loved them, and we're back on those, those trails that we, we love to run. So they actually welcome feedback, and they act upon it, and they do have the equipment to fix it. That's the important thing. For an example, I was on Rubicon Ridge my first time out there. And going from the main trail, which had some stair steps, I was not quite set up to do. 
going over to the bypass, there was a tree that looked like multiple people had clipped by accident or just had troubles getting around, and I let them know about it. And sure enough, when they went through and did some maintenance on Rubicon Ridge, they ended up taking out that entire tree because it was indeed a nuisance, and a lot of people were just having issues damaging their rigs on it or just getting around it in general. And yeah, they took took my feedback and did some maintenance of their own. It was nice. Yeah, that's good stuff. This, this is <laughs> these are these are the kind of things that that I like to hear because it you know we can relay this to the people. Hey, when you go to one of these parks or you go to one of these events, if you see a comment box, leave a comment. Uh, make a post online. Yeah. Talk to the park. I know uh, uh, Sherry and, and Jennifer out there at Barnwell when. People post online. They read every single comment. They read the good and the bad. They read them all. And and then sometimes they'll come to us and say, hey, guys, uh, they're telling us, you know, they have problem X, Y, Z, but that's not the park. That's you guys. And we're like, okay, we're jumping on it. And, and <laughs> we, we get we get word of mouth straight from them, right, uh, the problems they have, and they'll tell us before the event, hey, we're going to have to fix this. We need some help with this. Uh we had the same issue with a couple of trails because last year before Jabo it rained a crap ton uh, and it only rained at night at our event. I think there was a little bit of rain in the day, but before the event it was raining horribly. I think they had a tornado or two or something right around the, the hill. So we were like, all right, what do we need to do? And Sherry and them hit us straight up, said, hey, we, we only have one trail that got washed out and we're going to go do it the day before the event. If you guys can uh, uh, use do whatever you need to do to set up the event, just know we're not going to be around. And then they did their thing. I think we ended up helping them at, at one point. But the reality is, is it's them and us working together, right? It's it's never. It doesn't feel like uh, we're having to go in and, and you know fight to the nail to get something done. We you know they they work straight with us. Jennifer will come to us before the event and say, hey, go check out all the campsites, take pictures, do whatever you need to do. They need to look like that when you leave. And we're like, sweet. So we go do that. We literally go take pictures of all the campsites. She'll come with us if she if she wants to, and then afterwards, when before we leave, we clean everything up. She'll help us too, uh, if there's anything that's left behind. But I would say 95% of trash is picked up because our our event goers are amazing. Thank God. Uh, and then we go out there and we pick up what little bit is left and we deal with it. And and the park is quick to say thank you. Have a good day. See you later. Can't wait till next year. It's a it's it's a big uh, it's a big relationship between the two, right? And it has to be that way, or these events would just never keep going for 25 years. I'm really impressed by that. 25 years. We're at 18, technically 19 years, but and I'm sitting here going, this is exhausting. <laughs> 25 <laughs> years, man. That's that's pretty dope. That's pretty neat. It, it takes a lot of really great people, and that's what we have. And you know, we're not the only ones. That they utilize that park. There, you have the Cottonland Land Cruiser Club that utilize Hot Springs Off Road Park, and and you know, and they're those guys do an amazing event in the fall, and and you know, they've made improvements to the park with their own money that they've raised, and so it takes that support to continue to thrive year after year and to put these things on because otherwise, if you don't have great people. And if you don't have a great facility and the support of that facility, like Barnwell, and like, you know, Craig's leadership from Toyota Trucks of Arkansas that has really joined forces with us and, and created that little brotherhood, um, it's, that's what keeps it going. And that's what makes you want to do it, that you don't get burned out. You don't uh, just get tired of doing it year after year. And it makes you really want to do it for another you know, 25 years. And again, I keep going back to the people, but that's, that's what makes it. And that's who I want to hang out with. Uh, you know, when I go down there is, is all the great individuals that I've met for 25 years that are still going, still thriving and still wanting to do this and, and keeping the tradition and, and really loving just the Toyota. And yeah, I think if it was, you know, there may be some other brand of vehicle out there, some some Bronco clubs or Jeep clubs that, man, I just don't think they'd have it. I, I just don't think they would have the com, you know, the same type of atmosphere and camaraderie that we have. That we have a love for these vehicles and continue the traditions. You know, you 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 mentioned all the people, right? Uh, we 
we literally talk about people who come to Jambo, the first event, who have been there for, like, Rod Peterson's been around for so long. And then someone was like, oh, he sold his truck. We will message him and be like, bro, what are you doing? And he's like, ah, oh, I got kids. I got this thing. This. I'm like, oh, man, what, well, are you, uh, can you, can you still, you want to still come and volunteer? You want to keep hanging out with it? Because, you know, for us, it's, it's, we lose that person. We, and, and it's not just a truck thing, right? We, yeah. you know, it's, oh yeah, drive whatever truck. But at the same time, you know, we've, we've built these families over the last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, right? Uh, Chris and them started as just friends renting the park out for the weekend. And now it's, it's still just friends <laughs> renting the park out for the weekend. You don't, you don't want to lose one of your friends because they, they're, they had their third child and they got too much going on. Like, oh man, well, you can ride with me. You'll be my shotgun, right? Right. You're still going to come. And that, that's that feel that I think you're right. I, I don't, I never got it at, at a lot of other things I did. I think the, again, the only, it brings me back to the old days when I was a soldier uh, overseas and, and, and a lot of us got our money together to rent a, a, a parking lot basically to drift in. And that's that camaraderie that we always try to go back to. And, and I think we've even found that a lot of the veterans that come to our event will say that same thing. Like, Oh man, this this is that camaraderie I'm looking for. This is this is it. Mm-hmm. And, and I agree that it, I think it's because it's half ran by veterans, but it seems like we have a lot of veterans at our events. And maybe it's because of the same reason why I like it, right? That if you guys, I don't know if any of you are, but uh, veterans, but it's that same feel of, of trauma bonding as we joke about, right? Like when you're going down a trail, it's stressful. So when you're doing it with somebody else and, you're working with each other to get their vehicle out doing recovery you trauma bond <laughs> it's not the same as as being a soldier but it does get that same kind of feel in the, in the long term with these people where you really just can't wait to see them again uh, no doubt that's i think that's so important that we you know um provide support to the community and support those that, that support us and the people that owns these parks uh hawk pride barnwell Hot Springs Off-Road Park. I mean, they're making a living doing this. They're providing us a top-notch wheeling experience. We can come spend the weekend with, you know, our families, our buddies. Uh, we can get in vehicles with 40 to 43-inch tall tires and go thrash all weekend. Or, you know, we can take a daily driver up there and just spend the weekend hanging out, uh, enjoying the scenery and that kind of thing. So I think, you know, the like-minded people and just having that camaraderie and, and you know, being – uh, aligned with the community and, and what we're trying to do it's it's super important that we um you know continue to uh support those businesses little small businesses the parks and and the clubs you know that's that's one thing about that about us we love uh, you know I've, I've heard several events mentioned uh, you know just showing each other love and going out and hanging out and uh, you know just showing up and showing out as uh, some of our buddies like to say <laughs> I think I, you you talk about some of the the vendors that you know the small businesses and everything. There's there's small and big businesses that have helped us tremendously. And I've always I don't I actually don't know if you would call Demello a big business or a small business because it he never feels like a big business when you talk with Jason. Yeah, yeah. But, but it depends know. on what day it is. If Jason tells you it's a small business or a big business, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's been out to so many jambos. After a while, I. I I think if, if anything ever happened and we didn't have a, a Demello there, I, I think I'd be like, you know, do we do we pack it in now? Is it over? <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you, you have those long-term relationships with, with uh, even the vendors that, that come out. And, and I will say that it's uh, strange to get excited when certain vendors sign up and you're just like, oh, oh, sweet. So are we doing this this again this year, you know? A complete customs every year. And, and I joke about this online. But this really was one of the things that sold me at Jambo is uh, they will cook uh, a corn. They'll roast some corn, do some street corn, put some some chili on it. The works, bro. I'm every year that pops out. I'm out there going, yep, I'm, I'm in line. I'm in line for one. Hook me up. <laughs> and it's those simple little things that just they make me smile and remind me of like the first time I went to Jambo because he was handing them out out of the back of a truck driving around going, yeah, you want one? And I was like, get the fuck out of here. Really? He's just giving out corn. <laughs> and I had, had a couple of drinks in me because it was after hours. It was like nine o'clock at night, nine thirty. I was done with everything. And I was like, street corn. Really? <laughs> 
Uh, but, there's a place selling some Arute. They're going to get some business from at least me and my wife. <laughs> um, the Mexican street corn. Um, the wife would be there every day. Is, yeah, my wife says she would be there every day. <laughs> well, in the words of our buddy Jeff at Cotland Cruisers, he said, we going to eat. If there's one thing we're going to do, we going <laughs> to eat. <laughs> we, we have a, a guy that's coming out this year. He's uh, I am so bad with Kyle... Oh, I cannot remember his whole name. Like, uh, it's it's four names for his name, but he's coming from uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and and I when he messaged me, he's a uh, an influencer, makes some really funny videos on uh, Instagram. He messaged and said, "Hey, uh, I'd like to come to the event, but I can only spectate. I'm not going to be able to bring my truck. Um, do you know how how can I get in? What do I need to pay for and everything?" And and as an influencer, I said, "Hey, if you come to the event, you shoot some footage." And you bring me some food from your home country, bro. You're in for free. He was like sold. <laughs> he goes, he goes. But what am what am I going to get from you guys? I was like, well, on on Saturday we have barbecue, and he was like, oh, I'm in. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's well. Right. If you come to the 25th anniversary Razorback Ramble, we're going to give you some food from our home country, some uh, fried catfish. <laughs> oh, brother, I'm a, I'm I'm from Texas. Fried catfish is my jam. <laughs> That is that is my that is me right there every day. My wife actually, we were um, in, stationed in Qatar for a year and a half, and we went to a, a a market there, and they had catfish, and they were selling it something stupid cheap, like like a like they even said this is this is peasant fish, don't eat that. And I was like, nah, bro, you're good. <laughs> we <coughs> bought a crap ton of catfish, went home, and she fried it up, and I, I that's the only moment that I felt like we were back at home for like a few minutes. <laughs> and everything is tan because it's desert like no other. Uh, you get a little fried catfish and you bring you right back home, man. Oh, that was good stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm talking to Chris about if him and Matt will be able to come or not. I don't know who all will, but our goal is after Jambo to tear everything down, get everything prepped. Uh, and then still try and go straight to your event. And I think Chris is treating it as a vacation event, right? I'm going to try and bring the media set up. The concern I have is internet. Starlink does not let me do video. That It just will never do video. Do you guys have a decent Wi-Fi there? Or do I need to bring a hotspot? Or... It's, it's okay, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, is there, is there, is there it it work very well if you are near the store? I mean, like if you are sitting at one of the table and chairs that kind of are under the eaves of the store, then it works very well. But the further you get away from it, the weaker it gets. Because I'm, I'm they do have Wi-Fi hotspots out along some of the RV spots. Uh, I believe around 52, they actually have a hotspot rider on a pole there. So they have little Wi-Fi spots around the store extended, but if you get into like a primitive camping areas, you're not going to find Wi-Fi. Because our, our goal is to try and broadcast from the event like this, out of the back of the truck. Sure. Transmit video to YouTube so that we can... You could definitely some, do that. Find some time during the event where you guys aren't too busy and can sit down with us, and we're going to talk about what happened at Jambo and talk about what's happening at your event at that moment. And, and really kind of let people hear more of this, like what we're going through in the back end, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people, you know, they, they it, this happens. People find out that we don't get paid to do these events. We don't make any money <laughs> off of these events. And they go, why? <laughs> and I go, I don't know. I ask the same question every year. Uh, but the reality is, is we do this for fun, right? This is, this is what I enjoy yeah. doing. We do it for fun. We love meeting people. We like making friends and seeing them every year as we come back to the events and seeing what they've done to their trucks since then and seeing what they're willing to go through and do. And it's just fun all around. And so that's what we want to kind of showcase is, is us chatting up people, maybe bring in somebody. Because I know at, uh, at our event, we have a couple of people that I'm trying to line up and chat with, uh, one of which is the guy who drives the, the, the Helica. The, the Celica dropped on a, I think it's a Forerunner frame. Uh, he's he's coming to the event this year, and we're going to talk to him about the, the trials and tribulations of going to last year's event and then making it to this year's event. Uh, 
and that's the kind of thing we want to do, right? If there's a there's a good uh, heartwarming story, or if there's just something that we want or you guys want no to promote, we're we're down to uh, sit down and talk with them and let people experience that aren't at the event uh, because of whatever. I actually had a chance to talk to that man that owns the Helica a little bit, and yeah, he's he's had a decent go around uh, with life recently. Yep. With some trials and tribulations. Yep. I, I, I tell you what, uh, before the last event, I, I was on chatting with him when he said, hey, is this is this acceptable to go into the, like, could I bring this to the event? And I was like, bro, what do you need to get that there? <laughs> and he said, no, nah, I just, my dad's helping me with everything. And then uh, this year is, is a different story. And I, I'm excited to let him tell that story uh, so that people can see how much effort we put into it, depending on whatever struggle we're going through, because we all enjoy coming back to the event. I think uh, that that one's a, 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 a touchy one for a lot of people. I think people will get a little... Uh, I know me, I'm, a, I'm an emotional uh, 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 idiot. I, I'll probably tear up because I'm a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's, it's those kind of things I want people to hear, you know, how much we invest as as ourselves and how much of our lives that we put out there to come to these events and on top of that to host these events you know um a couple of years ago before the raffle i literally 15 minutes before the raffle got a phone call that my grandfather passed away and i had to literally hang up the phone ignore it for 15 minutes go do the raffle for two hours and then turn around and absorb the knowledge that i just got two and a half hours earlier you know <laughs> we <laughs> We struggle, but we put on a show for people, and we do it because I don't want everyone else to feel awkward in that moment. But at the same time, the next day when people heard the rumor, there's nothing but love and support from the community. And it, uh, it always drives me to come back. I, just like you said, man, it's seeing these people again every year. I feel like I'm at home. So my goal is to go around to, these, to, to different events like your event and the one in Hawk Pride and post up this setup and let people hear you know the full stories behind a lot of things that happen at these events right like the uh getting dougie to explain you know why he rode that rav4 the way he did through the stampede like he really just wanted to tear it up like i believe his words were we never wanted to drive it home we wanted to tow it home and that that <laughs> that's commitment <laughs> I mean, some people will say, yeah, but he's got money for that. Like, you'll be surprised at how hard it is to run a business and how little money you actually have. But a project may fall into your lap that you luck out with and go, you know what? Let's destroy this. And, and that's, that's fucking awesome because he's, he's making people want to come to Jambo just to see what crazy he's going to do next year. And then, first off, that's smart marketing. <laughs> yeah. But really, that's, that's what we love is that we're all trying to push Jambo one more – or even, you know, your events. We're all, like you said earlier, we're all trying to just make it a little bit better every year. That marginal gain every year. Just make something more efficient so that it feels better for the people that come back every year. And so that the people that come for their first time are shocked. Like, why haven't I been here every year? We don't know. Show up next year. <laughs> no doubt. It's a great way to uh, get together. And, and like I said, I mean, I can't. You know, beat the bush enough just about the camaraderie and, and being able to disconnect. I mean, look look at the last five years that we've had, how drastically everyone's world has changed, you know, just with different things that, that we've had go on as a, as a country, uh, you know, or even globally. Um, you know, man, unplug from work a little while, come out here, let's hang out. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, I, I challenge you to find somebody that's sad and send them my way, man, because uh, that's that's not what it's about. We're uh, <laughs> we're doing something wrong, uh, if, if that's the case. But I would uh, I would bet you a paycheck that it wouldn't be that way. So that's that's what a lot of people say is is no matter what kind of stress is going on, this is their chance to get away from it, and that, and that's how I feel too. Is this is the most uh, stressful thing that I do when it comes to uh, like thinking and, and working and, and assembling this event, right? Chris is such a genius behind it uh, and, and Matt doing logistics and all of our staff <laughs> from from Stephen, Colleen, Andrew Taylor, all, all of these people put in so much effort to make it feel like 
uh, it's seamless, but it's so stressful at the same time. As soon as I'm there and I'm doing it, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is my stress relief. This is it right here. <laughs> yeah. We actually, we actually had a guy that messaged us. He's, uh, he used to work radio and nothing against him, you know, good for him. He used to work radio. Uh, but he was like, Hey, uh, I was at your event last year and I, you know what? I should just uh, provide my service for you guys and be on the, be an MC for you. I was like, sorry, bro. Uh, that is literally how some of us relieve stress. And if I was to tell any of the guys that get on the mics that, uh, we got a, we got a pro to come in here and take this over for me. They'd, they'd look at me like I was crazy. Like, what the hell am I here for then? This is my stress relief. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I agree with them. I, I, I get to interact with the people and I get to talk to them directly. That, that is our stress relief is, is, is seeing them happy, right? There's, there's face to face engagements and the excitement that they've given us coming to the event and the things that they get to do and the things they tell us they've did too. You know, that's, that's always funny to me. Well, I, I just looked, we've been going for over an hour um, minus my garbage time frame of not understanding why my computer hates me uh, and wouldn't give me audio. <laughs> but if you guys want to say anything else before we uh, cut off here, because the sun's going to set, which means my power is going to start draining from the truck very quickly. <laughs> Actually, it is. Yep, in the last 10 minutes, I've lost 10%, whereas I lost uh, 10% over the first hour. So sun's no longer helping the truck out. <laughs> My only thing is um, just come out, man. Come out, enjoy the, the weekend, enjoy the event. I mean, we're going to feed you. We're going to give you some live music. We're going to give you opportunity to win some cool prizes. We're going to give away some door prizes. Uh, we're going to have some guided trail runs. We're going to have some stuff for the kids. Um, we're going to send some swag and uh, a free Ramble entry certificate down to Jambo. I think um, one of our members are, are going to bring that down and, and hand it off to you. Uh, so, the people that are at that event will have the opportunity to come up and, um, you know, for free, um, free register if you can. Um, we want to make sure that everybody has a T-shirt, that they have a patch, that they have a sticker. Um, and if we do take walk-up registrations, however, you're not guaranteed one of those items. We'll order a few extra shirts, but we can't guarantee that we'll have the size. And we'll make sure that you get all of that stuff. So. Um, outside of that, it's for a great, great cause, Arkansas Children's Hospital this year. Uh, we try to roll in things that are uh, meaningful to the community and to our group every year that we donate the money to. We're not taking any money. We're not uh, We're not here to, to make a killing. We're here to have a good time and uh, just invite everybody out and love to see a bunch of new people, love to see a bunch of the, the old faces. So I uh, couldn't do it without each and every one of the people that, that come, the people that donate things, uh, the small businesses that we've talked about, all of these things that we've talked about, the park owners, uh, the collaboration between the clubs is very important, and we cherish those relationships. So that's all I got. Yeah, one thing uh, also that is kind of a pretty good draw is uh, free beer. Oh, we're gonna. Uh, <laughs> whoa. All right, what are we doing here now? There may not be yeah. some free beer involved. <laughs> free beer. Uh, but uh, again, just to, just to kind of piggyback off what Andrew said, uh, appreciate you giving us the opportunity to, to talk about our event um, and just, you know, and, and kind of show a little bit of our enthusiasm and our passion uh, that we really, really have for this club, this community of Toyota. Um, and, you know, and, and we appreciate the folks at Jambo uh, for putting on a first class event uh, that has a huge outreach and really drive the sport. Uh, and so we, again, just appreciate the time that you've given us today. Hey man, uh, I, I look at it like this. If, if there's only one event to go to every year and it's Jambo, uh, I'm going to get bored. <laughs> so knowing that there's other events that I can go to and, and any way I can help promote these other events and make them, you know, uh, recognized elsewhere so that they grow big. I can experience it from the, the driver's seat instead of from the driving perspective of the event. Uh, I, I am more than happy to help you guys uh, get recognized, get noticed. And I don't know if I need to because your event's doing great. I love it. It was awesome going last year. I, I, Chris and me already talked about, all right, Chris, I don't know if you guys know this. Chris doesn't get to drive at the event either at Jamba. So he's like, I can't wait to go. Because he used to go to um, FJ Summit, and that was his chance to drive. And we talked about it 
the, the park out there in Arkansas, man, that is a gorgeous park. They're, they're excited to see what has changed since the last time Chris has been able to actually drive. So it, it'll be cool to come out, man. Uh, I, I told him when I went uh, how much fun I had, and he went, shh, yep, i got to go next year. I was like, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think he forgot what it's like to drive, right? He's, he's like you said, we, we spent months doing this uh, before the event. Chris starts in October. I don't, I don't know why, but he does. He literally starts in October. So, yeah. I, th- yeah, I hope we get to see you, man. If uh, hopefully you get to make it out, and if you do, I'll take you on anything that I know that you can handle, or I'll, I'll take you even on something you don't know if you think you can handle. But <laughs> it's got everything out there from wild to wild. So if you want to have some fun, I'll show you around. Yeah, I'm, I'm always down to get in trouble on a trail. I mean, more than anything. Uh, Colleen, she's our one of our recovery team, the Jambo recovery team with Andrew and them. Uh, she does the same thing. She looks at me and she goes, yeah, you can handle this trail. You'll be all right. And I'll look at the trail and be like, are you crazy? She's like, I, okay, I guess. Let's go. <laughs> but, no, it's a blast, man. I, I love doing it. it. I'll definitely come out and get in trouble. <laughs> hey, well, we'll have plenty of people around to help you up a hill if you need it or – help recover you if you need it as part of the camaraderie in itself right on man definitely well guys i think uh unless you got anything else to say i think i'm gonna kill it here you guys good All right, enjoy it. hey i enjoy every Thank second you. guys it's been awesome did he just throw fireworks at us that is uh, so late <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I'm having a good time, and we're not even at the off-road park. (laughs) Fireworks never stop around here, fellas. All right, you guys have a good one. I may may edit the the intro of this after this goes live because it will reprocess, and then uh, we can cut out me standing around going, what the, what the, what the, why, for like an hour. (laughs) All right, you guys have a good one. All right, man, you too. Do the same. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.